Hello, everybody. Oh, you probably can't hear me because of what is this called? In a thing? Visor? No, it's not a visor. Uh, mouth. As you can see, I'm doing another. I wasn't going to do another video today, but Zoe finished my knight's helmet <laughs> to keep me warm during winter battles. And, oh, hang on a second, guys. Just so you could hear me better. Yeah, this moves. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh-oh, we got a snag. There's a little snag, babe. Where's the snag? Right here. So, I thought I would just go ahead <clears throat> and do my, um, M reading, or what I'm reading. What do you call those videos? The books that I'm in the process of reading. <clears throat> I might not put this up till tomorrow. I don't know. Um, I was just so chuffed about my very protective helmet. Um, Zoe's also going to put another layer inside here for a coffee filter so that it's COVID safe. Um, oh, dude. Babe, I might need, like, full body. <laughs> like, I look <laughs> silly in a... I look silly in a tank top <laughs> with a goddamn night helmet. <laughs> Somebody say you look silly with just the helmet. What? what? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm not supposed to put her on camera. So, <clears throat> there we go. So, um... Oh, I took my glasses off. I was like... You guys want to hear something sad? I'll tell you something sad once I get my my focals on. Um, I made the print on my phone gargantuan so I could read my phone when I wake up in the morning before I put my glasses on. And... Um, I'm still having a hard time. So, uh, but then when I put my glasses on, I feel awkward that I am only reading like two words on the screen at a time because that's how big the words are. And when I'm reading a book on my phone, my wife pops her head over like this and she goes, <laughs> Oh! Th those words big enough for you? You think you could read them? And she just says mean stuff. But, you know, you do what you can. So this video is, what the fuck am I reading right now? Um, Zoe promised me that she would be jumping in and doing videos about all the books she's been reading and stuff like that. But, um, as you can see, she, <laughs> she hasn't, um, jumped at the opportunity to, uh, you keep doing them at annoying times. <laughs> annoying times. What, what, here, watch this. What time's annoying, babe? All the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um. We just got gas back. Yeah, we didn't have propane, and this morning I was going to tell you guys, because I was drinking a cold cup of coffee, because um, I wasn't going to do the video I posted earlier until later, but um, I'm like, you know what, we're having some problems here, and um, luckily for me, the problems seem to be internet related and not on my end, which was a huge plus, but I didn't realize that until I started uploading the previous video and um, YouTube was having a stroke. And then I was like, oh, okay. So anyhow, back to the hotel. So what I'm reading um, I guess I'll start with an uh, actual book. I got this for Christmas, and I'm absolutely loving it. 
but it is very dense historical reading. Um, it is the National Wrestling Alliance, the untold story of the monopoly that strangled pro wrestling by the legend Tim Hornbaker. Um, if you like wrestling, I think he actually does um, baseball books too. But dude, this guy, he's like, oh, you, you've heard this whole story? Hold my beer. I'm going to go do some research that's going to knock your socks off. <clears throat> and um, this book is like chock full of names and places and dates um, that are just like ridiculous. Like it starts back um, like in the teens and 20s for the most part of the last century. And um, <clears throat> I'm about a third of the way through it now. And um, I've gone through the history up until um, 1970-ish. But the way it works is that it'll give you a giant chunk of history. And then it will start um, giving you um, like almost like short biographies and when i say short it's still like 30 or 40 pages biographies of certain individuals that it brought up in the last big bit so like um strangler lewis um pat o'connor uh luthez sam muchnick um buddy rogers um and it's just going through all the different territories all the people who ran those territories um all of the infighting between the territories. Um, and we're, I'm getting to the point where the, um, antitrust group, I can't remember the, like the federal antitrust act or whatever it's called, um, is going to get involved. Um, so we'll see what that's about. Um, but it's just super interesting. So if you have any like love for, the knowledge of professional wrestling or just knowledge of sports in America. Like if you enjoy that kind of stuff and you love dense, very well researched books, um, you're gonna love this book. And we got some Jack Briscoe on the back there. Um, so it's just, it's a great book. And Tim Hornbaker, he just came out with a book on, uh, Buddy Rogers, like a whole book on Buddy Rogers, the original nature boy. Um, and I haven't got it yet. It just came out and everyone who has ha who does have it, or at least has like a, uh, um, advanced copy is just like bouncing off the walls about how good it is. So there's that. <clears throat> so, um, it'll be a while before I finish that because honestly, after I read a couple chapters of that, I realized that, um, I don't remember all the dates, so I have to go back and reread it um, just to make sure. Uh, let's see here. What else? Um, I'm reading... Um, yeah, these are all wrestling. Okay, um, well, one of the um, kind of... I don't want to say Holy Grails, but it's a book I've been looking for for a really, really long time. And um, Ferox Press put out a copy of it that you could get on Amazon and stuff like that. But um, are you ready for this, guys? Satan was a lesbian. Um, this is one of those pulp classic um, trash novels that everyone wants to have an original copy of in their collection, not because it's a great read, but just because it is the most like ridiculous cover. It's the most ridiculous book. Um, I mentioned in the last video that I want to do a bigger, um, overview of lesbian pulp fiction in the fifties and sixties. And, um, this book here, out of all of the lesbian pulps that I've read, this one is probably the first one that 
is, because I mean, I haven't read a ton of them, but I've read probably more than anyone you know personally, I guess is the best way to put it. But um, this is the first one that is just like almost graphic for the sake of being graphic. Um, it used to be like with the older books that came out in the 50s that it would be a maybe suggestive cover with a suggestive title but the book is just a book that happens to have a romance in it between two women and then um it's very uh kid gloves on how it is and then usually by the end of the book um one of them meets a fiery end and the other one realizes the error of her ways or some ridiculous crap like that but um and that could happen in this book i'm um a little over halfway through it but if this is not a book you could just sit down and read it's like it's very um like if if I was reading this book and the book wasn't Satan was a lesbian, I would have put the book down a long time ago because it's not written well. It's not a good story, but it's just like I've been trying to track this book down for ever. So I might as well actually read it kind of thing. And um, so I'll let you know how it is, but at least halfway through, it seems like this could have been broken up into two different books. Um, so, and I'll tell you more about that once we get there. Um, next, let's see. We'll go to another wrestling book. Um, Gary Hart's um, biography or autobiography, memoir, whatever. Um, oh, oh man, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. My life in wrestling with a little help from my friends. Gary Hart, um, you'll see a picture of him right here or there. He is a complete legend. He's one of the few people who, if I could dig up their body and take them to lunch and pick what's left of their brain for a couple hours, I definitely would. Um, he's terrifying. He looks like... Every time you see him, like even if you're at home watching on TV, he looks like he could see you watching him and he's plotting on how to break into your house that night and what he's going to do to you when he gets there. And he was a manager. He wrestled a bit, but he was mainly a manager. And um, if you are from Texas um, or uh, grew up in Georgia, um those were really the two biggest places that he was at for long periods of time. So, um, yeah, he's a legend for sure. And, um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and it'll probably finish it quite soon because it is a load of fun. <clears throat> then we have, um, uh, we'll skip that one for right now. The Long Ride by James McKimney. I just started this, um, and it hasn't grabbed me yet. Like, I honestly just started it last night. I got about ten pages into it, and it didn't jump out at me. But I've heard tons of praise about this book. So, um, I'm going to give it a little bit more time here. Um, Epitaph for a Tramp by David Markson, um, another crime, uh, classic, um, haven't even started it. I, I read the first page and wasn't blown away. So that's two books. And the reason why this is shocking is because like the last probably like 10 books I read, the first page was so freaking good that it kept me going. Um, but I'm running into some books that might take a little bit longer. Zoe thinks I have problems with ADHD and that's why I have a hard time focusing on a book if it doesn't grab me right away. 
Um, and then finally, the last one um, I'm reading at the moment. Oh, wait, no, there is one more. Um, so we'll go to the other one first. Eggshells by Chris Carlton. This is a very niche book. It is a book about, and I'm listening to this on Audible, so if this interests you, it's on Audible. It is a book that is strictly about the wrestling events that have taken place at the Tokyo Egg Dome. Or the Tokyo Dome. Um, but they call it the Giant Egg. Um, so, it, um, I think the first batch was in like 89. Um, I'm a lot more through it now, but... Um, the reason why I wanted the book was to read about <clears throat> a lot of the events from All Japan Pro Wrestling um, and New Japan when they were doing um, the super cards with um, WWF or WCW coming over and also the matches with um, Vader and Stan Hansen, um, especially the one where Stan Hansen <clears throat> accidentally popped Vader's eyeball out. Um, that's just some good shit. Um, but I'm going to be getting into all the um, New Japan Wrestle Kingdom stuff. There was actually one chapter about a all women's um, super card event that lasted over ten hours. And I was like, I have to see this. And like when I found the video of it online, and it was like. 10 hours and 47 minutes or something, I was like, oh my god. I don't know if I could sit through that much. So, um, but yeah, so it's very niche. Um, so if you're into that stuff and you're all geeked out on New Japan and Wrestle Kingdom and all that stuff, this book would probably interest you a great deal. Um, and then last but not least, um, a book that so far is so crap. I don't know if I'm going to finish it. It's ready. It's called nudist camp by Ori hit. Now Ori hit, um, is kind of like one of those like legend paperback writers where, um, pacing, he's super good at it. He would crank them out. And he also, um, because he was writing a lot of the sleaze fiction kind of stuff, he made um, a deal with the publisher that they wouldn't publish or they wouldn't sell the books he wrote within a certain area from where he lived because he didn't want his um, kids to get any grief and stuff like that. Um, just like a solid dude. He was a little guy, like stature wise, married, kids, loving father, the whole deal. Um, super awesome husband, the whole thing. But he just wrote these like ridiculously crazy sleaze novels, like one after another. Um, so he's just a interesting guy and I hadn't read any of his stuff before and I picked up a couple of his ebooks. So um giving him a go and let me tell you nudist camp so far is not great. Um it's about a woman from Iceland who married an American and the American is a big jerk but she doesn't understand what the big deal is because in Iceland everyone bathes in the nude and sunbathes in the nude and swims in the nude with their friends and blah 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 um, but there's all these people that they're dropping into the story that have pass with her husband and um, the girl she has hired to keep her company while her husband's away on business showed up pregnant and um when she asked who the father was she started crying so um i feel like this is gonna get like a lot meatier really quick but um i swear to god if it's just talking about how comfortable people in iceland are with being naked i might have to ditch this book 
And that's saying something for me, if that's boring. Boring, yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> All day today, Zoe's been saying bad stuff and catching herself saying bad stuff and hiding it. <laughs> she thinks if she pulls the hood of her hoodie over her face that I won't be able to see her anymore. <laughs> um, so that's funny. But anyway, so those are the books that I've been reading. Um, and as uh, I finish them up or whatever, I'll do some videos on them. I got more to do. Um, and then uh, maybe tomorrow or this weekend, um, I'll do my TBR, I guess, for February. Um, and we'll see how that goes. All right. So um, thanks for hanging out. Um, dig my crazy cap, you know? So if you guys want one of these, <laughs> Zoe's going to be selling them on Etsy in about five minutes. She won't. But if you guys want one, hit her up. If you guys miss Zoe, put in the comments that you miss Zoe and want her to start doing videos and to quit being such a baby. Well, maybe you'd be nice to me and... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> What'd you say over there? I said be nicer to me. <laughs> okay, and then what? Um, do it at a reasonable time. Reasonable time? It is 5 o'clock right now. And the last video I did was like at 10. That's true. So, everything's reasonable. I think I'm the problem. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys hear that? Did you guys hear that? Like, I have that recorded. I'm the problem. Just try to get away from me now. <laughs> All right. We got this. All right, guys. So we will be seeing you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, look at Zoe waving like a little <laughs> cutie. Oh, she's hiding. Okay. Oh, she's keep getting lower. Where are you going, babe? Oh, still go. Oh, there. Oh, oh. Okay.